action. Proper depth. Nope, dropped it. Uh. What's, What's up, up Light Bright Nation? Nation? All right, today we have Abby's Jeep back in the shop because she's gonna get a new product install. So what we have here is Next Venture Motorsports all new redesigned JL skid plates. This is the same kit we have on Stepchild, but this one is newer. It has newer brackets. These are a little easier to install. But anyway, if you wanna learn more about Abby's Jeep here, you can check her out on RevKit. And if you don't know what RevKit is, it's like, it's like the LinkedIn of your build. And it gives you a ton of inspiration. You can search for people's builds and it has all their build data on here. It's free. Hey that? look, there's us. <laughs> There's a lot of inspiration on here if you're looking for to do something new. You can search for all kinds of builds. So one of the coolest features of this skid plate is the plastic that they put on here. It's about a half inch thick. It's ultra high molecular weight plastic. It's uh, self lubricating, it's super slippery, so you can't get stuck on the rocks. It's the same product that we have on the bottom of the stepchild and I'll tell you what, it works great. And it's super strong. We've slid the stepchild on this in multiple videos, if you can recall, because Kevin likes to do that. And it holds up great. So we're gonna get this product slapped on the bottom of Abby's JL. And let's get this thing rolling. So first thing we gotta do is get in the air. So what you're gonna need to take stuff off, you're gonna need to drop all the stock belly pans. It's an 18 millimeter, 13 millimeter socket, a couple of extensions and a ratchet possibly a 13 millimeter wrench. All you're gonna need to take all the stock stuff off. To put the new bellies on, it's a lot easier. You need a 916 socket, a ratchet, and a 516 Allen socket. That's all you need to put the new belly up. Up, and a couple of ratchet straps to hold the gas tank up. I suggest you run the tank as empty as possible before you start, because that tank is pretty big and we have to hold it up. So one of the first things we gotta do on this belly pan is the engine cradle. Gets these two braces bolted on. Carriage bolts for the 916s. Super easy. So the first part of this assembly is getting rid of all the stock cross members and this little skid plate. And then we're gonna work on the fuel tank skid, but we're gonna do that last. But first we're gonna get these guys out of here. And discard. And lastly, we gotta take down the fuel tank skid. This is the hardest of the parts. As you can see, we tried to get this one out, but it looks like Abby has bashed it off a rock, so it didn't wanna come out. So now we're gonna have to cut this guy off. We're just gonna use a disc on it, and we're just gonna cut that nut off. There's, there's no saving that. Yay. What we gotta do is strap the gas tank without strapping the skid. You can get around it in the front. You have to go over the frame. Then you can floss it in here. You can floss it under the front of the tank and up and around. There, so now we're in. Get plate. Then we'll go up over the trans. We're holding the end of the tank up. So now we should be able to take this bolt off. Now let's see if we can do the other side. So another thing I suggest is at least cutting this T 
so that you can break it off with some pliers. The strap did not want to come out. Just snap this little guy off so that the skid would come down. Might not happen for you. You might be able to get it through there, but this thing did not want to go. So we ended up just cutting it and breaking it off. So there you have it. The gas tank skid is down. So I got the strap right here holding this tank up. Again, this tank is almost empty, so it's not really heavy. Make sure it's almost empty before you start this on your own. And the front went right through. It's really easy. So now we just gotta put the straps, the new straps on the frame. Utilizing the factory hardware, we get to put the new gas tank straps up and then the new skid plate will bolt to these straps. <laughs> that way you don't have to do this again. Gas tank is hung. Now that you got the one strap in, now you can take these off. Next one to go up is this large center one. Again, using the factory hardware. Before you can hang this gas tank skid plate part, you have to put the two back brackets on. The small bracket goes tab out on the side with the brake on it. This side is on the frame, so does this. This side is on the frame. Carriage bolts go from the inside out. Not tight, because once they're on the Jeep, we can adjust how this fits. And then we can snug them up. Now you can install the skid plate. These two carriage bolts, you might have to use a jack and jack the skid plate up into this cross member so that you can get these carriage bolts in. So you gotta leave all the bolts loose because this is the most important one. This is an aluminum subframe with an aluminum threaded hole. So you might have to move it around with some pry bars to get this one started. But once this one's started, then you can go ahead and tighten all the rest of the bolts up. So in order to get these two bolted up to this subframe, they supply you with these two brackets. They go inside, flat plate down, nuts up, all the way over. They'll locate on an aluminum bung up here, and that's what locates these holes. This bracket goes over the drive shaft, so it goes on the left side of this belly pan. Don't tighten them until we get this fully installed. Then we can tighten down the brackets. Okay. Come on. There we go. Now that you have this in place and all the bolts are still loose, now you can put in the other bracket on the other side, the same way you did this one. In through the middle, up and over. It'll locate. Now you can start this bolt. Before you hang the, the last plate, you have to take remove this bolt because it goes through the plate and this opening. And you can start this last Allen. So there's one hole you do have to drill. For this front corner, you have to drill a half inch hole. There's a flag nut that you can put in this hole, but you have to get this hole drilled first. So we're gonna go ahead and pilot it and then just run it out with a step drill. Once your half inch hole is drilled, the flag nut just goes through this hole. Drops down. 
Now once all the bolts are in and everything's located, now you can tighten up everything. We just gotta do the motor mount side. So now there's one more thing left to do. You just have to put the brackets that go on here over the exhaust. And that's how you install the next Venture Motorsports skid plates. Make sure you check them out because they have a lot of other cool products. Rock sliders, fenders, they have a lot of neat products. Make sure you go check them out. All right, so now that Abby's skid plates are put on, our buddy Gil reached out to us because his front locker has been leaking air. So we got Beck down here. She's gonna pop this front cover off and we're gonna supply some air to it and find out where it's leaking from and see if we can get this thing fixed for him in a jiffy. Hopefully it doesn't need anything major. Ta-da! Okay, what do we got going on in here? Looks like they ran the brass down under and then back up. Everything looks good so far. All right, let's go get the air. Here's his air supply. All I did was put a vacuum line on it and then hooked it up to a, an air blower. You can already hear there's a leak down there. So I'm gonna have Beck hold it and I'm gonna see if I can find out where the leak is coming from. Hit it. Oh, it's coming over here. All right. Definitely coming from in there. Now we're gonna have to just take it apart and find out what O-ring it is. Dang it, I was hoping it was gonna be on that end, but it's not, it's on this end. Crap. All right, so like everything we do, this is not gonna be an easy fix. So we're gonna get Abby's off the lift and we're gonna get Gil's Jeep over here so we can get this front end torn apart and find out exactly what's leaking. So we got Gil's Jeep over here. We got it on the rack, got the wheels and tires off. We got the drag link off. All we gotta do now is pull the brakes and the axles, and then we can get this diff out of here and see what it's doing. But for now, it's getting late, so we're gonna do this in the morning. See you in the morning. So before we pull these CVs out, because there are CVs, they always have a lot of grease on them. We wanna clean that grease off just in case the boot slips off and we don't fill the CV full of dirt, because that's disgusting. WD-40. So you just uh, slather it in WD-40, a little, little brush and the grease just dissolves. Wipe it up with a paper towel. We'll clean these CVs off real good before we start pulling these apart because the last thing I want to do is get dirt in there and then we have to rebuild them all together. So let's not do that. So we're just going to clean them up real quick. Would brake cleaner be a bad choice? Brake cleaner doesn't tend to cut this RCV grease. WD-40 does. It cuts it right, cuts it real good. Look at that. Ooh, nice. And WD-40 cuts RCV grease. So now this is nice and clean. I'll clean all the way around so that we don't get dirt in it if it pops apart. So now we got the RCV boots all cleaned up, both sides. Back here is gonna take off the calipers and then we're gonna pop the wheel bearings off and slide these axes out so we can get this problem of a diff out of here and see where it's actually leaking. We got all the bolts out. We got the caps off to see how clean this is just so we don't get any dirt and dirt and stuff on there. Now we just pull that guy out and the axle will come out. Got to yank it. Oh, that's plenty. One side out, one side to go. So now we just yank this side. Don't yank so hard this time. <laughs> Perfect, no dirt, no nothing in there. Now we can yank this guy out of here. So we just pulled this O-ring out of the inside of this and it's really chewed up. Like, and it's missing another sleeve, another washer and another O-ring in there. They're, they're, they weren't in there, so I don't know how this was working, but it wasn't leaking, but that O-ring is chewed. So when we put it back together, we'll make sure we do all that. It's missing quite a few pieces. All right, so we were getting ready to pull this out, and I noticed that this is actually, I think this copper's broke, or the brass is broken there. I don't know if you can see, but I think it's cracked right inside of there, and that was a big problem. I'm not gonna touch it. I'm gonna see if I can get these bolts out of here without moving it. Okay, there it goes. To 
the table. Yeah, it is right there. Right under the copper. Yeah, that was flux, the flux broke. That's where she's leaking. So Gil has a trans cooler, much like Bex. His is a little bit smaller. And now that we're coming into the colder weather, we have to put a thermal bypass on it. What this thing does is it routes fluid through it and bypasses the cooler until it comes up to temperature. So it'll run out of the trans back into the trans until it hits about 180 degrees and then this thermostat opens up and then your cooler will work so that your trans comes up the temperature much faster in the winter. Looks something like this. He has his trans cooler with a fan mounted up here. So we're gonna have to put this guy up out of the transmission. And yes, I'm gonna do backs very shortly too because it's gonna be winter time. So this guy's gotta go in, in between these two hoses right here. Out of the trans on the lower hose, and then it'll bypass and go right back in to the upper one. And then when it hits 180 degrees, this thermostat opens up and it'll allow the fluid to go all the way back to his cooler. This should be an easy install. Cut some hoses and put some hose clamps on. Pretty easy. A little pipe thread on here. A little pipe dope. Keep it from leaking. I wanna mount this bypass valve because it's silly to just have it hanging in there. So what I think we're gonna do is this shifter bracket for the shift linkage, I think I'm gonna put a piece of angle iron on there and mount it up in there like this. It's definitely gonna clear the drive shaft and everything and you'll still be able to get the shifter cable in and out. I don't think it's gonna interfere with anything and then it'll be solidly mounted. And then these two hoses will go right here and then we'll just redo this side to go to the other two. I think it'll work out just fine. So Beck's gonna go cut some angle iron right now. <laughs> but here it is. Cool little bracket, fits up in there. Misses the floor by about an inch. It'll stay out of the way of the drive shaft. Should be good to go. Now we just gotta put it in. This is pressure out of the transmission. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to cut this back here and we'll re-swedge it so that the hose clamps don't come off. We have to go from here and just 180 loop into here. And this will go back to the cooler and then the cooler will come through back through here. So when it's cold, this pill is closed so that the fluid just wants to go out to the radiator. And then when it heats up, this will open up and it'll allow it to pass through to the second cooler. So we just need to cut these two guys up here, cut this metal bracket right here, re-swedge this, and connect that guy to that guy. Watch yourself. All right, so all I did was I cut this part off and I used my little master cool kit here. I got it on Amazon. This thing is awesome. I love this thing. Three eighths hose. He's this cool three eighths guy in the three eighths housing and it makes that. So it just swedges the end of that. So that'll be a nice crisp swedge. And then I won't have the hoses slip off and hopefully it doesn't leak either. We'll find out. Now I just got to do the other side too. So I'm gonna pull the other one out of here. Just gonna pull that upper hose and do the same thing to the end of that so it doesn't leak. So we'll get that out of there and swedge it on that end too so we don't have any more leaks in any of these hoses. All right, it's not easy. I don't know if you can see real well, but the tool is in there. You can do it. Let's see if I can rig this thing up and show you how this works. So we got the tool up in there. Here's the pill that swedges the end of it. Now get out of the way. That guy goes there. Close up the hydraulics and just squeeze the handle. Give it a couple swedges. Should be good. Pull that out. Got that pill out of there. Come on, buddy. Come on. No, it is not the cleanest of jobs. Look at that. Perfect swedge. Now we won't have a uh, hose clamp slip off. All right, and there's the final install. Comes out of the trans through the bottom one, goes in here, and until this thermostat pops open, it just goes up and to the radiator. And then this will pop open when it hits 180 degrees. The flow will continue straight through, go to the cooler, come back out, go to the radiator, and then back into the trans. And that's how it goes. Quick shout out to Northridge 4x4 for delivering this super quick for us. We ordered it Friday and we expected it to come in on Tuesday with the two day ship and it came in one day. So now we can get this Jeep finished today. But we are super grateful because it takes forever now for parts to come in. So thank you Northridge 4x4.
Just gotta be careful with these guys to not bend it too far out of shape. This side is okay, obviously. You don't wanna mess with this side because it breaks. So we just gotta be gentle with it at first. See this one's all there, fresh braze. The hardest part is getting these little rings in these grooves. These air control rings are probably the hardest thing to do on this hole. Well, you made it look easy. <laughs> little marble mystery oil on here, just for the initial set. Back on she goes. Perfect. Now we just reassemble. Install. So now we gotta bend the, the line up, but I don't wanna put any kinks in it. So we're gonna use a quarter inch socket so that we can wrap this around, make a nice radius to bend. Cause we don't want any tight kinks, but we do wanna get this down under here. Now we'll use our fingers here. So we don't want any, any of this to rub in that housing on this gear. So I'm gonna go all the way up here in the top. That fitting and poke out right there. Now, like I said earlier, this was originally missing a couple of pieces. This is the older style. I got it apart. It's pretty chewed up, but I think you can save it. Got a fresh O-ring. Just put a fresh O-ring on here. Get that all the way in there. And try not to strip it. There it goes, perfect. Awesome. Now we just tighten that guy up and swedge that O-ring in there. And this will make a nice tight seal. Massage this more to get it under the case as far as possible. She doesn't come up into that gear. Nice radius, no pinch. No pinch up here. Should be okay, to get, good to go. Oh, I feel the, I feel the O-ring. Oh, starting to get tight. Now we just gotta seal it up, fill it with gear oil. Well, gotta put the axles back in. Then you put the axis back in, then you put gear oil in it. Then you hook the airline up, because I haven't done that yet either. But we're almost there. Last thing we're gonna do is make sure that that diff is good to go before we button it up. So just like before, you just hook the airline up, and then hit it. Does it leak down there? Perfect. Super quiet. Perfect. Now we can button it up. They feel like mini toilet ponders. That's it, I'm over it. All right, so she's all closed up. We just finished put, filling her up with gear oil. Just gotta put her down on the ground, put some wheels on it. Yeah, and we'll take it for a test drive and call Gil. Well, we got Gil's Jeep all wrapped up. Doesn't leak anymore. Super excited. Abby's Jeep is finished up. Yep, we got Abby's Jeep finished up. She's Runs really great. really excited. She already drove it home to Colorado already. She drove it home. She came in and drove it home. That's all we got this time. Remember to like and subscribe and share. And remember you can get all of your Light Bright merch and decals at lightbrightstudios.com. That's right. We'll see you later next time. Bye. Can I get a A? Nice. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. We're keeping it.